As we enter a summer of uncertainty and change, it's having an impact on mental health, too. The school closures, learning online, limited contact with friends, and the cancellation of activities is unsettling. It's hard to measure the scale of the problem because it's still unfolding. Experts do say they've seen a significant increase in demand for counseling services. Canada's largest pediatric centre, the Hospital for Sick Children in Toronto, is leading a study examining the mental health impact of the COVID-19 measures on children, youth and families. Jennifer Crosby is a clinical psychologist and health clinician scientist within the Department of Psychiatry at SickKids Hospital. Professor Crosby, thanks for taking time to speak with us. Tell me about this study you're involved in. Who's taking part? What are you measuring and tracking? Absolutely. So when the COVID measures were put into place, very quickly, those of us who are working in mental health research came together to try to see how we could understand what the impact is on children, families and youth. So four major mental health studies that were already happening in Ontario quickly came together so that we could create a survey and a mechanism of reaching out to families virtually and finding out how they were doing, how they were coping with these emergency measures that were in place. And we're going to track these families over the next 12 months because it's not just about the initial measures and what the impact was, but what's the impact over time? I know there are huge variations in how kids cope, but in broad terms, uh, can you tell us what the studies revealed so far about the impact the pandemic has had? It's very much in line with international data that is showing that children and parents are reporting an increase across a range of concerns such as anxiety and mood and irritability and attention and concentration. Really a very large percentage of respondents have said that parents have noticed an increase in these traits from before COVID and also a lot of uncertainty and worry about what's going to happen down the line. You know, kids, especially younger ones, tend to want to know what the plan is, what is happening next. With all this uncertainty now, not even knowing if they'll be back in class in the fall, what does that uncertainty potentially lead to? It has been very difficult, and that uncertainty is a key part of that. You know, I think everybody, initially when the emergency measures went into place, there was a... Families had to cope and come up with new strategies of, of dealing with that, and, and to some degree I think that became a new normal for families but now as we head into summer and school ends again we have a whole new section for kids to to kind of think about so by and large camps are not happening if they are happening they're happening in a very different way sport programs not happening there's still a lot of uncertainty and you know every day and every week there's an update and a change and that uncertainty uncertainty can be very difficult for kids who's most at risk of developing mental health challenges because of this pandemic you know, we don't know the answer to that, and that was really one of the most important elements of this study, is that this is unprecedented. So there's so many factors that we need to consider that this data is going to really be key in helping us understand what the impact is and what would be important moving forward if perhaps we need to think about or plan more emergency measures if there's a second wave or that this goes on for a longer period of time. We're really hoping that this data is going to help us plan and perhaps identify the kids who we should be and the families and the youth that we should be touching base with earlier and perhaps providing targeted interventions to help them cope and manage better in these uncertain times. You know, kids look to us as role models. How important is it that we manage our own anxiety and take care of ourselves and not put too much pressure on ourselves to plan the perfect summer? Absolutely. I think that's a really important message. Kids do look to adults as their emotional barometer as such. And so modeling, um, managing our anxieties and our worries and sort of being in the moment, setting up some routines that work for your family based on the new situation, um, pri providing some normalcy within you know, your family life. We can't control what's going to happen in a month or two months or with school or with COVID. But, you know, we can set aside dinner times, um, times of days or times in the week when we play games together, things we do as a family. You can really set a new routine and a new pace within a, with a family. And then, then kids can really rely on those expectations. And they can know, well, these things, these things are going to stay stable. And so while there's other things that are maybe a little bit uncertain, um, these are the things that I can count on. So wherever you live across the country, Country, figuring out what is allowable and then 
kind of facilitating and helping kids get out and reconnect with their social networks to sort of help them re-engage that part of their life, which is so important to them. Sick Kids is looking for families from across the country to participate in the study. If you're interested, you can email the team at covid.mentalhealth at sickkids.ca.